Hey, David, man, thank you so much for having me out. I really appreciate having the opportunity to come out here. Uh, holy smokes. Hang on, let me fix my hair and makeup real quick. All right. That's better. Man, it's a nice little build. Uh, there's a couple things that have got me a little bit, a little bit worried. Some things that I don't see very often. Uh, I'm going to start here with the outside. So this I actually see all the time. They've got their, uh, they've got their flashing here that's just completely. Well, they cut this off for whatever reason, so that uh, needs to be fixed. Now your gauge, your gas gauge is at zero, which probably means they've got a leak somewhere in the line. I'll make sure that goes on my report. Speaking of the uh, these flashing plate, these panels, uh, this is for here. You can see it says fits all one and a half to one and three quarter inch. Uh, however, this pipe is only one inch, and so you can see there's a gap right around there. So they've got the wrong size panel for this pipe. Speaking of which, this ain't even a pipe. It's just a wire coming through. And you can see all this potential for water to get in if it goes through your siding here. But what I really want to show you is over here. You've got a couple spots that have me worried with these, these mud sill anchors. Now you can see these mud sill anchors, they're embedded, oops, they're embedded into the concrete and they stick up like a little Y. And uh, they fold those ears over and nail them in or if it just happens to land on a stud, you can nail it to the stud. Now you can see, the further down we go, the further in your wall is, and the further they've had to bang in these things to bend over. You can see a little bit of damage there. But check this out. There is a couple of them that are just completely busted out, man. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, there you go. So this is completely just cracked off. And then you come over here and you see how far that's bent. Now that's that's way more than the manufacturer. So inside, this is already at an angle. So this is way more than a 90 degree angle here. This one's bent over. You can see where they've hit it with uh, some sort of a chisel or something to get it in there. This one's completely cracked open. Chisel, it was probably the teeth of the, uh, the ears of the hammer. Anyway, so... Yeah, they've had to bend it over. Uh, now going inside, let me show you. Now this is your primary bedroom. This is that back right wall. You can see that they have drilled in a new anchor here, but that's because you, uh, you've got a sill splice right here and you need to have an anchor within 12 inches. But where you've got all these mud sill anchors that are folded over, the ones that are broken, not even fully installed, as you can see, there are no additional facet, uh, anchors that have been put down. So this wall has a rather weak anchorage to the foundation, which, uh, and so, you know, that definitely needs to be addressed. Just having to find this at the back porch, man, where they, you can see where they just ground it right off. These are the ears of that mud sill anchor. So uh, hopefully that was right here where they've, installed an expansion bolt so that's what it should look like that one looks good that one looks good so it's those ones over yonder that uh got me a little bit worried i'll just uh add that to the um to the fray here so here's what those mud sill anchors look like before they embed them into the concrete so when the concrete uh when the slab is wet they embed them uh like this and down to these little these little tabs <clears throat> and then it hardens and that allows them to fold this up at the uh this kind of hinges up and then just pound nine nails into it well seven nails if it needs to be equivalent to one half inch bolt which is what they should have around here uh all nine nails if it is a five eighths inch bolt like out in california um, or if you want to hire, you know, wind design out here. So um, this is what they look like when they're bent over and nailed. Now they hold down pretty good. It's equivalent to a seven inch bolt, seven inch, half inch, you know, bolt going down into the concrete. Well, I guess five eighths if you nail on nine nails in there. 
but uh, it's a great little it, and the nice thing is that it can fold down or one of these legs can be nailed straight to a stud depending on where the studs fall in place so uh, that's what that is now since we're in the garage a couple things I want to show you first of all this uh, lead in bracing this metal strap stuff this stuff is great for temporary bracing but uh, the manufacturer's instructions state that it is not to be a substitute for proper let-in bracing. And I'll include the link to those manufacturer's instructions. Now, this being a braced wall, you need to have the proper anchorage in here. It has to be equivalent to a, an exterior wall or per code, per plan rather. So you can see you got a shot pin here and you got a whole bunch of nothing. Another shot pin here. Anyway, typically it'll have bolts or they'll double up on the shot pins uh, every stud bay. So that needs to be fixed. Here, your portal frame. This is fancy for your garage opening, man. A couple things they just haven't done. First of all, they haven't got these things to fit properly. Look at those gaps. Big old gaps at the header, at the studs. And they should have a strap right here that goes actually that strap should go here to the top of that cripple all the way down and uh, there'll be a link to those instructions too in the uh in the report when i say instructions i mean from the code now this was probably an engineered design but there's no way they're i seriously doubt that they're gonna um skip the strap in the engineer design so they need to come back of course there's no design that says you can have these giant ass gaps over here but below the header but uh they need to get that fixed also coming up here this is a bonding wire that's supposed to be pulled up through here and connected to your gas line speaking of which your gas line is not supposed to be in contact with your wires here or this big mamma jamma up uh, no sorry right here so needs to get fixed now they haven't they haven't put the roof covering on all they have is that underlayment there's no way they can come in with the insulation until they get that roof covering on and especially block up uh put some flashing boots on these uh these stacks you gotta have that sealed you know and then you come you come over here you can see they did a half-assed job of sealing your vent so that needs to be corrected uh, oh something I want to show you over here in your breakfast area now it's gonna be kind of hard to eat breakfast if this thing the roof falls on your head now I don't think that's likely but this crack in the truss certainly does not help. See that little tiny line, the little black line up there right in the middle of the screen? That is a crack at a knot. And that needs, that's a potential failure point if this truss gets stressed. It's definitely not gonna meet its design uh, load capacity. Speaking of design load capacity, Here's your wall just hanging out. Your exterior wall hanging off about an inch and three eighths all the way. Damn, there's garbage in here. All the way down the line here. Um, I suppose if you're gonna have one wall that's gonna hang off, this one's probably okay. But you shouldn't have any walls that hang off, especially these, you know, exterior walls. Um, so, you know, they need to look at that. Speaking of this uh, TWB is what it's called. This TWB bracing, which which honestly shouldn't be in here. It should be lead in, wooden lead in bracing, or some other strap. Uh, it's not at the right angle. This should be at a 45 degree angle, and this is a 66 degree angle that I measured. So I mean, if they're gonna put it in here. They should at least put it in here right, I would say. But uh, see what they say. You know, maybe they can install. Um, another strap going the other direction and maybe the engineer would okay that One thing they haven't done is they haven't capped these drains last thing you need is for any kind of big debris water bottle or who knows what to go down it Block it up 
then you gotta rip it up. So uh, typically, I see these. Uh, I see these capped. They'll put a cap on here temporarily, block them up. But they definitely need to to do that because, uh, man, you don't want anybody stuffing anything down there. Now I'm sure they wouldn't stuff anything down there, you know. But you, yeah, if a burrito just happens to fall in, you know, it, it could uh, cause some trouble. So make sure they cap that. So I pointed out earlier these expansion bolts that get drilled after the fact sometimes, especially when you've got uh, a splice in the sill plate. They got an extra one kicking around to show you exactly what it looks like. This is the bolt, it's a half inch bolt. They drill it down. You can see this piece that uh, is kind of loose above this bell end. Well, you drop it, you hammer that sucker in there and then when this pulls down, uh, when you drive this down, it'll pull this up and this expansion bolt will, uh, it'll bite hard into place. They say it's as good as a wet set bolt, maybe, I don't know. Um, but I mean, as long as uh, code allows it, then uh, good to go, I suppose. So up here, just kind of chilling in the attic space. And uh, you can see there's a couple little things up here. Like this giant split in the truss member that is uh, right over the corner of the garage. That probably needs to get looked at. Maybe put a band-aid on it. Now right behind this damaged truss member over here, you've got this gusset plate that's all catawampus pulled out, peeled back. So that needs to be fixed to another one for the list. So there you go. That's what you can expect to see for the most part. There's going to be a few other things on the report. There always are. Um, a lot of the same stuff I, I catch pretty regularly on these jobs. You know, things they just need to kind of tighten up and, and make sure they, they hit before uh, going any further. But uh, the things that I've mentioned, all of them are very, very important that they get taken care of. And um, good luck dealing with the builder, man. If you've got any questions about their response, let me know because I've got, uh, you know, a couple ideas that might help um, if their response is less than favorable, less than ideal. Now, they're not going to fix everything. They never do. But um, if they want to push back on some things that uh, might be a little bit more important than others, then definitely, definitely let me know. And, uh, you know, maybe we can, I can help you with that. So, man, thank you so much for having me out here. Um, I really appreciate having the opportunity to come out uh, and uh, have a good rest of your Memorial Day. See ya.